This is made with AI. This is also made with AI. In fact, all of these video game scenes are generated with AI. In today's video, I'm going to go over not one, but two AI systems that could change the way we design and play video games forever. So let's jump right in. The first AI is called Game Gen O. This is a project by Tencent, which is like the Google or Meta of China. Anyways, this is an AI system that generates entire open world video games. It can create various elements of a game, including the virtual world, the characters, the storylines and quests, plus the gameplay mechanics. So instead of game developers manually creating every aspect of the game, Game Gen O can produce many elements automatically. Now, this AI specializes in open world video games. If you're not familiar with this term, open world games are basically large explorable worlds where the player is free to move around and do whatever they want. So a popular example of an open world game is Minecraft. And we've seen many AI agents actually being trained in Minecraft already. For example, NVIDIA's Voyager and more recently Altura, which has deployed over a thousand agents in Minecraft. See this video if you want to learn more about that. Anyways, back to Game Gen O, here's how it works. First, let's go over how it was trained. So it goes through a two-stage training process. In the first stage, the model is trained on a large dataset to develop a broad understanding of game design. They actually trained it on a custom dataset called OGameData, which was specifically created for this project. So in this dataset, it includes over 32,000 videos from more than 150 next generation video games across various genres and styles, including open world RPGs, first person shooters, racing games, action puzzle games, and more. It also covers different perspectives, such as first person, third person, and styles such as realistic, traditional, cyberpunk, etc, etc. Now from this, they did some further curation and processing, and they ended up with over 4,000 hours of high quality video clips. Basically 4,000 hours of gameplay data of these over 150 games. And it's important to include all these different genres, all these different perspectives and styles so that the AI can learn how to generate and design all these different types of games. And then each video clip in the dataset was annotated using GPT-40. So basically this is labeling each video clip with a text description and they used GPT-40 for this. So here's an example. Let me play you this clip. So this is a gameplay scene in Red Dead Redemption 2, and here's the description. This is basically going to be the metadata of this video. So here's a scene from Grand Theft Auto, and again, here is the label, or basically the description of this gameplay scene. So in total, there were like over 4,000 hours of these gameplay clips, plus the appropriate descriptions. And in fact, just the creation of this dataset took around six months from the curation to filtering to labeling the data to ensure high quality. And as I've mentioned multiple times on this channel, the quality of training data is key to creating a good quality and performant model. If your training data sucks, well, it's garbage in, garbage out. So your AI model would also suck. That's why they needed to spend like six months filtering and curating this data set to ensure that the quality is actually good. So anyways, they trained this AI model on this data set of a lot of gameplay data. And this is crucial in getting the AI to understand and generate various elements of video games, including characters, environments, actions, and events. Anyways, after this first stage of training the AI model, the next stage involved is instruction tuning. In other words, here they are fine tuning the model to follow specific instructions from the user. I'll talk more about what these instructions are in a second, but first here's more information on the architecture of Game Gen O. It's built on a diffusion transformer architecture, and this is also used for a lot of the top image and video generators out there. But instead of outputting just any video, this AI has been trained and fine-tuned to generate only gameplay style videos. And speaking of video, I also wanted to clarify what exactly it can do and cannot do. What are its limitations? Note that for now, it only outputs video like this. 
it doesn't create an actual game that you can play. Plus, this is not in real time. In other words, it doesn't generate scene after scene on the fly. But that's okay, because I'm going to talk about another AI that can actually generate a fully playable game where you can move the character around and interact with the world. And you can do this in real time. More on that in just a second. But back to Game Gen O first, after running it through this Diffusion Transformer model, it outputs a video. Now, there are several controls at your disposal to customize the generation. So here's what you can control. First, you can actually prompt which character you would like to show up in the game. So in this example, here we're prompting it to use Geralt of Rivia. And for your reference, this is from The Witcher, and he looks like this. So you can see Game Gen O just nails it. This indeed looks like Geralt of Rivia. Here's another example. Here we're prompting the character to be Arthur Morgan. And for your reference, Arthur Morgan looks like this. So this AI is indeed generating Arthur Morgan. Here's another example. Here is an ice magician. And then here we have Robocop. Here we have a security guard. Here we have Jin Sakai in a bamboo forest. So yeah, you can specify the character in the gameplay using a prompt, but that's not all it can do. So you can also specify the environment. So for example, this is spring, this is summer, and then here we have autumn, and last but not least, winter. And not only can you change the season, you can also specify other environments. So for example, here is a lake, here is a sea, here's a lavender field, and here is a pyramid. But that's not all. You can also prompt it to generate different actions. So here the prompt is motorcycling from a first person perspective. Here we have motorcycling, but instead of first person, now it's in third person. Here the prompt is driving, so this is perfect for like a racing game. Here we have flying in a third person view. And then we have walking and riding a horse and riding a carriage. Plus, you can also specify different events. So for example, here you're making it rain, here is snow, here is thunder, here's a sunrise, here's a tsunami, and a tornado, just to name a few. And then of course, it's not just limited to these simple prompts, but you can add a lot more detail to the prompts. So for example, here is a cyber monk roaming in Chinatown. Here is a time master standing in another dimension. Here is a traveler with a cloak walking on Mars. Here's a magic steam airship soaring in the clouds. Here is an angel looking at the Holy Kingdom. Here is a venom druid touring Rune Forest. And a ghost walking under the blood moon. But that's not all, so here are some even cooler things you can do with it. The output is a continuous video. You can prompt anything you want and it would actually change the gameplay to your prompt. So for example, here the prompt is fire on the sky. Grammar police here, I know it should be in the sky. Here the prompt is dark and star. So you can see gradually it's turning into nighttime with a starry sky. Here the prompt is sunset happens. And you could see now it's generating a sunset. And here the prompt is fog emerges, and indeed, now it turns into a very foggy environment. So you can see the flexibility in changing the characters and changing the scene and the environment is just insane. This tool is super powerful. Now, as I mentioned before, it can also take in certain key presses. For example, the WASD keys, which would make the character move up, down, left, right. So you can see if you press A, this is going to get the character to move left. If you press D, he's going to move right. Here's yet another demonstration. So if you press A, he's going to move left. And if you press D, he's going to move right. So to sum things up, Game Gen O is basically a prototyping tool. It serves as a tool for game developers to quickly design prototypes and test different game elements without building them from scratch. Traditionally, game developers need to spend a painstaking amount of time to design a game, from concept art to designing the story, the characters, building the art, building all the 3D assets. But now, with Game Gen O, you can create a prototype in just seconds just by prompting it. 
So as you can see, it's not a hyperbole to say that this tech will indeed change the future of video games. Let me tell you about this awesome tool called Chat LLM by our sponsor Abacus AI. This allows you to use the best AI models out there all in one integrated platform. This includes GPT-40, Claude Sonnet 3.5, Llama 3.1, and their very own Smog. Not only can you use it like a regular chatbot, but you can also generate images using the best generator out there, Flux Pro. Plus, it has a really cool artifacts feature, so if you're coding or building something with it, it allows you to view and interact with the app side by side. You can also drag and drop PDFs and documents into here for it to analyze. This is great for generating reports and analyzing data easily. You can easily create data tables and charts right in the chat interface. So this is super convenient. They also have a new feature called AI Engineer, which allows you to create your own custom chatbot fine-tuned on your own custom data or instructions. You can seamlessly integrate this into Slack and other enterprise platforms, so it's great for team collaboration. Plus, you can also create custom agents to automate specific tasks. This is just a really powerful and versatile way for you to use the best AI models out there all in one platform. So try it out via the link in the description below. Now, do note that the output of this AI model is not real time. In other words, it doesn't generate this video game on the fly. Plus, as I mentioned earlier, this is just video. This isn't actually a video game that you can play. But that's okay, because this brings us to the next AI system, which can actually generate a playable video game in real time. So this is called Game Engine by Google DeepMind. And yes, the names are pretty confusing. This is Game Engine, so don't confuse this with Game Gen O by Tencent. Anyways, this is actually quite the opposite of what we just talked about. Here, they trained an AI in simulating a very specific game, Doom, which is a first-person shooter. The cool thing about this is it can generate the game in real time as you play. It achieves 20 frames per second, plus it maintains consistency over long trajectories. So as you can see right now, this is all AI generated. It can even track different stats in the game like the player position, the ammo, the health, etc. Now let's go over the architecture of this first. So similar to Tencent's Game Gen O, Google's Game Engine also uses a diffusion model to generate the video game. Specifically, they used an edited version of Stable Diffusion 1.4, which by the way is like the most outdated Stable Diffusion model out there. We already have much better models like Stable Diffusion XL, Stable Diffusion 3, and more recently Flux. So I'm pretty sure if they just switched the model from SD 1.4 to a newer model and retrained it, the results would be even better. Anyways, here's how they trained Game Engine. It also required two training phases. So this first phase is a reinforcement learning phase. Here they made the AI play Doom over and over and over. And while this AI is playing the game for a lot of iterations, they're also recording everything, all its actions, all its movements. They're recording this into a data set, which is used to train the AI in the next step. So in the next phase, a diffusion model that you see here is trained on the gameplay data collected in the first phase. This model basically learns to predict or generate the next frame of the game based on previous frames and actions. And as I mentioned previously, it uses a modified version of Stable Diffusion 1.4 as a starting point. The impressive thing is it can generate over 20 frames per second in real time on a single tensor processing unit. Remember, video generators like Minimax or Sora, they need a ton of compute. So the fact that this can generate a game at over 20 frames per second in real time with just one tensor processing unit is pretty insane. That means that as you play the game and move around, the AI actually generates everything on the fly, as you can see here. So this whole thing is AI generated. And so you can see from this gameplay here, it even tracks the user's stats, such as ammo and health. So in contrast with the previous tool called Game Gen O, which is more for prototyping, Game Engine is kind of the opposite of that. It's meant for actual gameplay. So you, the end user, can actually play this game and it will generate everything on the fly as you play. 
Anyways, while we're on the topic of both tools, here's a quick summary of their differences. So Game Engine on the right focuses on simulating one specific game, in this case, Doom, while Game Gen O can generate content for various open world games. The sky's the limit. You literally just prompt it with whatever and it can generate that, just like an AI video generator. Now, in terms of actual output, Game Engine offers an actual playable game that updates in real time, whereas Game Gen O only produces video simulations with some interactive controls. But all of this is just video, it's not an actual game. And then finally, in terms of purpose, Game Engine is for real-time game simulation, it's for people to actually play, whereas Game Gen O is positioned as a tool for game developers and designers. And these two tools actually go hand in hand. They're like a yin and a yang. So Game Gen O is for like designing the world, designing the characters, the actions, and once you've finished designing the game, you can actually feed this as training data to train game engine and then give this for people to play. And this will completely change how video games will be created and played. There's no longer a need for, you know, a professional high budget game studio. You don't need to actually design any of the 3D assets. You don't need to really design the environment or anything like that. All you need to do is prompt this AI to generate everything for you and then feed it as training data into this AI to generate a game that can update in real time as the user plays it. Now, this is just in theory for now. I mean, the quality of both these two tools are not great yet, but this is the worst version you're going to see. It's only going to get better with time. And with these two tools combined, not only will it speed up the game creation process, I mean, you can literally just prompt an entire gameplay scene in seconds, it would really lower the costs for game studios. And heck, even someone wearing boxers living in their parents' basement could potentially design an entire game by themselves. This is a really exciting time. So anyways, that sums up my explanation of these two tools, Game Gen O and Game Engine. Let me know in the comments what you think of all of this. Do you think this is indeed the future of video games where we just have AI generate scenes on the fly? Do you think this will be the end of game studios? And how soon do you think we will see this type of AI generated video game being released? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I will be on the lookout for the top AI news and tools to share with you. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Also, there's just so much happening in the world of AI every week, I can't possibly cover everything on my YouTube channel. So to really stay up to date with all that's going on in AI, be sure to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter. The link to that will be in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.